Hi, I'm Tiam. Welcome to another lesson on E3D. We are going to talk about equipment modification in this lesson. Remember the tank that we created in the last lesson? Let's continue to modify this tank. The first thing we want to do is to modify the length of the body, that means the length of the cylinder. Let's start by taking a look at the cylinder attributes. You can see that the height is about 10 meters and the diameter is about 4 meters. To extend the length of the body, double click the cylinder that we selected and drag the stretch gizmo so that we can extend the height of the cylinder by 1 meter. Let's key in the value of 1000 mm. When we do this, the attributes will update accordingly and you can see the height and the position of the cylinder has been updated. In PDMS, we do not have these facilities to stretch and update the attribute. Now let's look at another way of extending the length of the cylinder. Let's key in the actual height to be 12 meters. Now you can see the cylinder is now 12 meter, but at the same time we have to move the position down by 500 mm. So this is another way you can modify it by using the attributes of the primitives. Next, we are going to try to create a foundation for this tank. Let's use a cylinder to create the foundation. So when you select the cylinder, the center point is set to the position of the equipment. But we want to select the bottom of the cylinder that we created previously. But it seems like we can't snap into it. So what we need to do is to change the snap input. And we can do so by actually clicking on the snap input setting. The setting is found on the bottom right corner of the, the small icon there. And in the element, we just select the P point. Okay, and now when we hover over the cylinder, you can see lots of P points being displayed. And we select the one at the bottom. Next, we will give the cylinder a width. We can either drag or again, we can use the down arrow key to change the feedback to radius or B. But let's say we want to go with the radius and this time we keep the radius of 5 meters. Next, the height. But as we are going downwards, we have to put a negative value to this height. Let's key in the height of the foundation. So we have our foundation done. Now let's say we want to know what is the origin of this equipment. Well, you can see in the attribute is at 000 or you can mark and the mark will show you roughly where the origin of the equipment is. So let's say you want to change the origin of this equipment but not the position of the geometry. So to do that, you can go to Equipment, Modify Origin. And now once you do that, you can select the bottom of the cylinder with the foundation as the origin. So make this new point the new origin. There you go and if you mark, you can see that the mark is now at the new origin point. The next set of commands that I'm going to show you is how to position the equipment. Let's say we call out the grid that we have set up previously. 
By making the equipment the current selection, when you click on it, you can position the equipment by selecting the center of that coordinate that you see. You can continue to move this position to any other new position. Let's use another way to position the equipment. Let's use the move offset. And the offset allows you to move relative to the position it is now. I'm going to select graphical for the pick so that I can pick two points from any graphical elements. First, I set my north offset. Locking the north offset, I can set my east offset by selecting two points that I want to be the east offset position. And I use the midpoint of the length of the grid to actually move the east position. So I've got my east and north offset position and when I apply, the equipment will move accordingly. All these bear in mind, the positions that you see in the attribute updates accordingly. Another way to position is to use the absolute position. And this allows you to change from origin or any designated position on the equipment and move that to the position that you want. So I select the top of the tank as the designated position. And now you can see that the position in the form has changed and I can snap to another point and the tank will move based on that point to the new location. Let's undo this. So I show you some move command and really the move position and move offset were already available in PDMS. The next command that I want to show you is the rotation command. And I'm using the rotation advance to rotate the equipment. First, I have to set where is the position of the rotation and the direction of rotation. So I can set the position by using cursor and I can update the direction by changing the direction values. So you can see that when I put 90 degrees, I can just rotate about the north direction in terms of 90 degrees. And if I were to change my center of rotation to the top, doing the same rotation, you can see that the vessel rotate about the top point. Now, let's say our nozzle is in the, in the incorrect position. So the first thing I need to do is to go to the nozzle. Let's view the nozzle from the top down. And say we want to move the nozzle anti-clockwise 45 degrees. So let's go to our rotate advance again and you can see the position is the position of the nozzle but this is not what we want so let's select a design point which is the center of the vessel next we have to make sure that we position in the the rotation axis is in the right direction so we go through a few and the east seems to be the right direction. But let's make the direction and the position more normal to us by changing the with reference to work. I cannot use the backslash discrimination to do that. Let's change it to type the word were and we select the position. And now you can see that up is to the word and when we have minus 45, because it's the right hand rule, it will go in the clockwise direction when you do minus. So we get our nozzle to the correct position and hope you like our lesson and see you soon. Remember to subscribe and like our 
next video. Bye.